I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week how this Tribeca loft was turned into a funky yet family friendly home. And we're in Maplewood, New Jersey to explore this arts and crafts style classic. And we're in Park City to see how this home was built in harmony with the landscape. Plus, this sleek Los Angeles contemporary definitely designed to impress modern movers and shakers. But before all of that, we explore the loving restoration of this architectural masterpiece in Westchester. Their legacies have been around simplicity, quality of craft, something that is still really appreciated by people who visit. Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from a place that all of us at one time or another have dreamed of escaping to, and that is a private island. Only this isn't some far off land. This is less than an hour from Midtown Manhattan. When standing here, it feels like a world away. Oak Island, as it's called, is over half an acre of island living that sits off the coast of New Rochelle. You approach this Mediterranean-style mansion over a stone arched bridge that makes for wows right away. The home was built in 1917, and it's filled with original details like the moldings and the medallions, the beams and the fireplaces. Floor to ceiling arched windows frame idyllic views in every direction, and there are multiple terraces and outdoor spaces. The main suite is storybook perfection, luxurious yet cozy, with stunning views of the Long Island Sound and beyond. Are you sensing a theme here? It's one of six bedrooms in this over 7,600 square foot estate. Let's kick this week's show off up the Hudson River in beautiful Croton, New York. We are taking a look at this modernist masterpiece by one of the 20th century true master architects, Marcel Brewer. After some years of disrepair, it's been lovingly restored by its owners, who happen to also be Brewer devotees. Let's take a look at all that they've done in this over 4,000 square foot architectural treasure. Hi, I'm Ken Senna. Welcome to our home in Croton on Hudson, New York. This is known as the Newman House. It was designed for Vera Newman and her husband George. Vera was a famous fashion icon of the mid-century. And the Newman House was designed by Marcel Breuer, a famous mid-century architect who was also well known for his furniture design. As an early mid-century modernist, Breuer was very influenced by his time at the Bauhaus in Germany that ultimately started to permeate architecture and design here in the U.S. So the house is over 4,000 square feet. It's six bedrooms, including the one bedroom that's in the guest house, which is separated by a breezeway, and it sits on three and a half acres. As part of this house, one of the things he really experimented with was the use of color, and he introduced these floating cinder walls in red, blue, and white, and while he didn't use a lot of color inside the house, he was able to position the walls outside in a way that the glass would allow them to enter. And I think that the playfulness of that interior and exterior effect that Breuer was able to so successfully do here is something that is still really appreciated by people who visit. The architect was a big fan of binucular, kids on one side, parents on the other. The owner, Vera Newman, took it to an even additional extreme where she wanted to have separate entrances. So Breuer designed two front doors. On the left, you can enter towards the kitchen and towards where the kids' rooms generally are. Or you can enter to the right, and as you enter the right, you enter the living areas. You walk by a freestanding fireplace, and as you come around the freestanding fireplace, that was where you see the view open up. And I think the thing that we love the most about the house is just in general, the, the minimalist detail. You'll see the ceilings are a Hungarian cypress, but when we look at the floors, you'll actually see slate throughout. When we bought the home, it required a complete and total restoration. But I think the stone floors are an important part of the experience in the house, and we definitely wanted to make sure that we preserve that. So off the living room is the study. It's where the original owner, Vera Newman, actually worked. As part of the restoration of this room, as we were pulling out the built-ins, we discovered a photograph, and it was of her and her husband when the model of the home was actually presented to them. In the room, we didn't have to do too much. We did the floors. We also riffed on some of the original built-in design in order to do the bookshelves. In the early 70s, when Vera decided that she wanted to take up swimming again. Breuer and the firm returned to the house and designed an indoor swimming pool experience off the study. We wanted to introduce something in the house as a reflection of 
Vera's artistry. And so we came up with the idea of the sculpture in the pool room that reflected some of the simplicity of her designs. And it provides kind of a, just an illumination of her creative presence in a room that, you know, is a very fun room to be in. The dining room here also has a full view of the Hudson River. One of the restoration elements that I'm most proud of is the windows, a detail that Breuer actually spent you know, several years perfecting. And it was a way of, of both being able to bring the exterior inside, but also if you look closely, you'll see a sliding ball bearing track that he was able to engineer in the early 50s, which allows for these large panes of glass to slide easily. The patio is one of my favorite details of the house. It was actually one of Breuer's favorite details too. It uses kind of an irregular flow. It also reflects something local. Croton on Hudson has the Croton Dam, which is one of the largest stone structures in the world. And the masons who built the Croton Dam all lived in the area. And so what you see in these patios is a nod to their own artistry and their ability to build these beautiful sort of serpentine walls of varying heights and introduce terraces and even a pool element. And all of that was part of the very original design of this house. As you look through the house, there's an appreciation for materials, there's an appreciation for simplicity, not only through the architect who built and designed the house, but also the clients who it was built for. Their legacies have been around simplicity, quality of craft, and ultimately making good design accessible to the masses. We love living in the Newman House. We have loved the restoration, and we hope you enjoy the tour. Coming up next, we are checking out this ultra-modern home in the Bird Streets area of Los Angeles. Stick around. Welcome back. Now we're in the Bird Streets area of Los Angeles with designer Joelle Uziel. She shows off what she did to warm up this sleek, ultra-modern hillside compound with contemporary decor that complements the architecture. See what I mean? Hi, I'm Joelle Uziel, Los Angeles-based interior designer. Today, I'm giving you a sneak peek into one of my personal projects. Welcome to 1615 Blue Jay Way. This modern house sits on concrete and steel structure, standing four stories high and seeing the views of the city and beyond. Billionaires love their toys, and the entryway starts with a car turntable. Once you enter into the house, you're greeted with glass walls, one overlooking to the beautiful view, and another one leading you down the floating staircase. We designed this house with grand entertaining in mind. And what's more beautiful than to display a stunning Italian kitchen? But wait, there's more. We added a display walk-in refrigerator. How cool is that? You could display your drinks, your organic fruits and vegetables. I mean, we are in California. A couple steps away is this beautiful media room. Perfect space to be been watching your favorite show. I mean, look how cozy this is. And what's special about this area, the windows open up and it's a walkable skylight, which is an atrium. When you're standing on it, you see the bottom private living area, and when you look up, you see the gorgeous Los Angeles sky. And then, jackpot, that's the bar. You see the custom-built 400-bottle wine cellar. Wine, tequila, binge-watching, views. What more can you ask for? Once you grab your rosé, or your poison of choice, with a hit of a button, you get to enjoy the quintessential California indoor-outdoor living experience. Currently, we're in the primary sleeping area, a cocoon of luxury. The primary bathroom is an oasis of itself with double vanities, a glam station, dorm rock fixtures, a freestanding bathtub, and a shower that looks on to your pool deck and beyond. Now you've heard of a walk-in closet, but we have a walk-through closet. 
With over 600 square feet of space, this small tiny closet is no joke. If all that wow factor wasn't enough, take a look behind me to the 3,000 square foot Infinity Edge pool deck. On this private landing, you'll find a full outdoor kitchen, dining room area, chaiselongs, and gorgeous city views. In fact, you could probably touch the sky from here. Well, that wraps up the tour for this house. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Looking forward to sharing our next projects with you. Don't go anywhere because we have so much more ahead, including an arts and crafts original in New Jersey and this impressive mountaintop home in Park City, Utah. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now we're in Park City, Utah with architect designer Michael Upwall, who shows off one of his favorite projects, dubbed Sunnyside North. Michael wanted this mountaintop home to feel like both an extension and celebration of the stunning landscape. Let's see how he did it. Hi, I'm Mike Upwall with Upwall Design Architects. Welcome to Sunny Ridge North. This modern home sits on the top of a mountain, featuring 360-degree views of the valleys below. As you drive up, you arrive at the auto courtyard, where you are embraced by the structure. The exterior is clad in metal panel siding of copper, brass, and bronze that will naturally patina over time. But it's freezing out here. Let's get inside and I'll show you around. Upon entering the great room, you're greeted with a two-story soaring space, which allows the space to maintain such a dynamic experience. At the base of the stone wall is this beautiful fireplace that provides warmth and ambience to you and your friends. Adjacent to this room is the guest room. Many homes have guest rooms, but this one's special. It continues the radius design of the home by surrounding your guest with view and natural light. What a wonderful place to wake up in the morning. But my favorite feature of this room is the two-story glass window that wraps around the view of the mountains outside, leaning out and also encouraging circulation into the next space of the house. This home is designed for entertaining, so the kitchen is a showpiece, it's the stage set. The rooms are designed to satellite off of the kitchen, and you can still have a visual and a connective experience to the dining room, the great room, and the hearth room, where you can kick back, relax, and watch your favorite show. The master bedroom is separated from the public space by this bridge that designates a separation and a transition from public to private space. We're celebrating this experience by the window wall on the right that creates a rhythm that we move through. Not a long hallway, but a series of spaces, each one framing a unique view of the mountains. As you move into the master bedroom, you're greeted by this floor-to-ceiling window. Once you're in this space, you have complete privacy and everything you need. A fireplace, a TV, a sitting area to read and chill out. This perspective of the valley below is yours and yours alone. At the top of the stairs, you arrive at a loft transition area, offering 180 degree views of the space below as well as the mountain beyond. But this home has its own summit, the private study, which is just around the corner. This space truly represents all the best architectural elements of the home, from the fireplace to the backlit free-floating ceiling and the leaning windows. Here you can experience the full realization of the structure in one private retreat. Thank you for joining me on this tour of Sunny Ridge North. I had an absolute blast showing around the house, but now I'm gonna go hit the slopes. Coming up in just a bit, you are not gonna wanna miss this Arts and Crafts original in New Jersey. Welcome back. Now we're in Maplewood, New Jersey for a look at this arts and crafts style home nestled in its beautiful natural surroundings. It was built in the early 1900s and retains its original charm in the open living spaces with huge paneled walls, beamed ceilings, built-ins, 
and an enormous field stone fireplace. Details like these continue throughout this four bedroom home. Take a look. Hi, I'm Caroline Gosselin with Prominent Properties Sotheby's International Realty. Welcome to one of Maplewood's best kept secrets. High on South Mountain, this rustic bungalow cuts a modest figure, but it's anything but. Gustav Stickley designed and built this home during the arts and crafts era in the early 1900s. He designed it to be a summer retreat from New York City that is warm and inviting. Its authentic charm and character has been well maintained over the years. Let's go take a look. You can feel the functional energy and rustic vibe the moment you enter the home. The entryway is unassuming. You then step into the spiritual and physical center of the home. All of the materials that you'll see were purposefully designed to create a warm and inviting refuge. You'll notice the chestnut paneling, the beamed ceilings, the hardwood maple floors. And while the lights above me were not original to the home, they were custom designed by the previous owner, Paul Morantz, a well-known lighting designer in the industry. Speaking of lighting, and again, in true arts and crafts style, you'll notice the natural light pouring in from all of the windows that surround this room. And one of my favorite spots is this beautiful window bench overlooking the front lawn. The magnificent floor-to-ceiling fieldstone fireplace with a hearth covered in original groovy tiles is what I consider one of the home's chief beauties. Another unique feature are the stickly cabinets with original hardware that flank the dining room. The simplicity and ease of use is yet another nod to the arts and crafts era. The combination of old and new really comes together in this kitchen. It was completely gutted and redesigned, but still harbors many details that are indicative to the arts and crafts movement. On one side, you have an elegant Cornufé range, which is surrounded by custom country-like cabinets adorned with vintage hardware. To bring the outdoors in, the countertops are an aquamarine quartzite. Oh, and a fun fact, the pie crest pendant lighting was restored by the same artist who restored the lights at the White House. And right off the kitchen is the spacious screened-in porch and patio, which is nestled in the hillside. A tranquil spot to immerse yourself in the nature that surrounds you. On the second level, you'll truly understand the connection to nature that sets this home apart. Windows and natural light are carried throughout, making the main bedroom feel very light and airy. And another special feature of this home is located in the ensuite bath, a Japanese soaking tub that was imported directly from Tokyo. I like to call the outdoors an enchanted garden. You are surrounded by majestic trees and evergreens, and fieldstone steps and pathways are speckled throughout. Thank you for joining me on the tour of this lovely, well-preserved home from the arts and crafts era. See you soon. Coming up just after the break, we are in Tribeca to check out this design-forward yet family-friendly loft. Welcome back. We are going to close things out in Tribeca with designer Olivia Stutz. Olivia wanted the decor to reflect its downtown surroundings. Artful, evocative, and of course, stylish. I'm Olivia, founder and principal of Olivia Stutz Design, based here in New York City. Welcome to this wild loft I designed for my clients and their two young boys. This home is a treasure trove of funky pieces and objects begging to be explored and touched. 
Let's start with the living room. It makes me gasp every time I come in here. So we wanted it to have an artful quality, bursting with color and life, which you can definitely see in this large scale carpet I designed with Studio Alex Proba. And along with the colors and patterns, it became the inspiration for the whole space. The chrome chair is an absolute showstopper and contrasts beautifully with the rest of the furniture. I love incorporating two sofas together instead of one large sectional, which can often crowd a space. Here, I chose two modern and extremely comfortable sofas. They have clean lines and a low profile, and I upholstered them in black, the same black we used in the rug. The coffee table is actually called the Element Coffee Table because it's made out of brass, sycamore, and stone. The master bedroom was designed as a break from the rest of the home's boldness. We wanted it to be a quiet refuge, almost dreamlike, where the neutrals embrace you. So we brought in this beautiful mid-century modern chair by Hans Wegner, which is just so comfortable. And of course, the stone elements in the clock and the narrow Marquina black heart. This home was a joy to design and is definitely one of my most favorite projects. I hope this inspires you to design with creativity and color. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?